the other side of the quarterback situation that everybody's talking about for a couple of days out here was uh, that Kenny Pickett's longtime quarterbacks coach, Tony Rap, Rap, P, Rakia P. I don't know. I'm not going to even guess. I'm not even going to guess. I'm terrible with names. We all know this. Uh, went on and talked to New Jersey advanced media about the narrative that surrounded Kenny Pickett when he left the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is what he had to say. Quote, I would say the majority of those narratives were pushed by people and they are 100% BS. I would put his leadership ability against anybody out there. I will always believe in that kid. He has it. He has it physically. He has it mentally. He's tough. He's smart. There's this work ethic to him. He has the talent and the abilities. He has what you want. So much of this league is the right place, right time, and wrong place, wrong time. There's so many cases that point to that. So there's two sides to this conversation, obviously. We'll start with the right place, wrong time, what a, whatever. I think there's some truth to that. I think that Kenny Pickett came into a situation with the worst offensive coordinator the NFL has ever seen in an offense that he shouldn't have been thrown into with a ton of of issues. I, I think that that's very true. I think Matt Canada halted a lot of progression that Kenny Pickett could have had. I also think that there's a point where a quarterback just doesn't have what it takes to kind of take the early steps forward and needs more time. And Kenny would have gotten that time behind Russell Wilson. And I, from what I've heard, he didn't want it. He really did want to be out of here that he felt a little bit disrespected about the situation. I, I don't think that that's 100% Kenny Pickett's fault I because, I mean, I was on here. We've talked about how Kenny was informed before the Russell signing that Russ was going to come in here and this was going to be a competition, but they still loved Kenny and they wanted Kenny to be the franchise quarterback, and then it changed. And I think that's the truth, that Kenny was a little bit blindsided. Doesn't change his uh, his leadership, his ability, any of that. And to be totally honest with you, the Steelers did not have leadership on offense last year, and it was very apparent. I mean, leadership, just you you could see the difference of Russell Wilson out there compared to Kenny Pickett, like tenfold. It's instant. And I get Russell Wilson's a veteran, but I just, I, I don't know. I, I think this holds a little bit of truth, a little bit of non-truth. The whole, it was 100% BS. I do think the Steelers and Ray Fittipaldo of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette said this the other day, that he, the Steelers definitely got out there real fast, which was, I want to say a little bit alarming at first. It was like, okay, why you never talk. Why are you talking? so instantly and and kind of putting it out there. But Kenny kind of confirmed it when he spoke with the Eagles for the first time and just said, like, you know, that's a situation that's behind us. I felt I did what needed to be done, blah, blah, blah. So I think it was confirmed. I think people blew it up on both sides, obviously, because that's what you do. But I don't know. I don't think Kenny was the right fit in Pittsburgh. I do think a, a little bit of wrong place, wrong time. But I also think the Pittsburgh Steelers were wrong place, wrong time because they wanted to compete for a Super Bowl Kenny Pickett wasn't going to get them there and they were ready to make the moves. So I think it's both sides tenfold. I, I don't know. You uh, you agree, disagree? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think the big thing that you mentioned there is not just Matt Canada putting him in a, in a bad situation when it comes to on the field, but you mentioned it yeah. that there was no leaders. When you have a rookie quarterback, not all the time can you expect him to come in and take charge of that offensive room. You need a strong offensive coordinator at that point to take charge of the room and be the guy. Yep. Steelers didn't have it, so they were kind of aimless in that aspect, and that's not Kenny's fault. But at the same time, you know the stuff that happened towards the tail end and, and the exit. Again, we're never going to know the full extent of what happened, but it's somewhere in the middle, and everybody knows it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, uh, agreed, one hundred percent agreed. It's somewhere in the middle. People are going to run with one side or the other. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that I don't look at. I don't think Kenny Pickett is out of blame. I think that the whole running from competition thing has some legitimacy to it. I also think the Steelers weren't in the right situation for Kenny Pickett and they made bad moves, but Kevin Colbert towards the end of his career was just making bad moves all the time. And I love Kevin Colbert. I think he's phenomenal, but the last two, three years of his career were not the greatest and they just put him in a bad situation with uh, uh, some Steelers moves that haunted them for a couple of years, starting with Matt Canada, Mitch Trubisky was in there as well. It just wasn't it wasn't the right situation, the right time for either side to kind of say it was all BS is a little bit aggressive, but it's your coach. It's Kenny Pickett's coach. He's going to defend his guy. That's just that's just what happens. As for will he get another shot? I don't think Kenny Pickett's a starting quarterback in the NFL again. I, maybe I'm wrong there, but that's just it, unless it unless it falls into a place like a Mitch Trubisky where somebody needs him and they're going to give him an opportunity. But 
you're going to have to come a long way, you know, to kind of, to kind of prove that you're that guy. And there's with Justin Fields as a backup, it's hard to say that Kenny's first on that list when a team will need him. 